All right, so today we're gonna talk about hydrates. This is states of matter five. When you look at that word, what do you think of? We kind of talked about that in the bell ringer earlier. Whenever we see hydra, we usually think of water. And that's where, that's where we should be thinking for this, this concept today. A hydrate is any compound that has absorbed water from the environment. So that is our technical definition. Let's go ahead and write that down. Any compound that has absorbed water from the environment. Now, when, we, when it absorbs water from the environment, we are not seeing, let's see if we can get that a little closer. It, is, it does not become a part of the bond, but it is absorbed, it is held within that compound. So if that's the case, can we take the water off of the compound? Yeah, I see some heads shaking, yeah. And that is, dehydrating. So we want to make sure and get these words because that you will find these words in problems that you do. And hopefully you're thinking, okay, that's a Mr. Obvious moment. I thought you, I thought you said we had to talk about these before we could do our practice. It, yes, but let's make sure all the words are clear. So we're taking the water off of our compound and, or heating it. Usually it's heating it. Okay. So a hydrate is any compound that has absorbed water from the environment. When we take that water off, we dehydrate it. So what do we call it after we've taken the water off? It is called an anhydrate. Oops, that's an N an anhydrate equals after the water is taken off. And most of the time the anhydrate is a salt. For our purposes it is a salt or an ionic compound. And so we'll see, we'll look at an example of that next. Okay. So an example of a hydrate. Let's look and see what we got here. We have a couple of things to look at. See this dot right here? Let's make sure that we understand that is not multiplying. We are not multiplying. Okay, we wanna make sure that you understand that part. But what that dot does mean is that this number, okay, we'll just put this number. A lot of times we'll see an X or we'll see something like this, but this number of water, this number of moles of water, molecules of water, this number of water is attached. To the compound. Oh, 
want to get a little further. So in this case, for every one mole of calcium chloride, there are two moles of water absorbed from the environment. So we're still talking about that mole concept, and that's how we can compare our amounts. We can compare our proportions, just like we talked about earlier with recipes and compounds. For every one mole of calcium chloride, we have two moles of water. Okay, so what do we call this? We know that how to name the salts. So that's the first step when we go to naming the hydrates. So we'll put naming out here so when you go to do some examples you'll know it's where to look. The first thing is name the salt. Okay. In this case we have calcium and we have chlorine. We know that these are monoatomic ions, and we know that we're just going to say calcium chloride. Okay. But then we have this mess over here. What do we say for that? That's the second step. In the second step, we have to find the prefix. Now, you guys have used prefixes a lot of times. And luckily for us, they're very similar. So, I'll just write them right here. Number of water, of moles of water. We have one. What prefix do you think you're going to have? What have we used in the past? Mono, right? Two, what are you going to use? Di. Four is tetra. What is five? I heard a faint whisper. Penta. Six. Hexa. Seven is hepta. Eight is octa. Nine. And we'll just keep 10. So these are all prefixes. They're going to go in the front of the word hydrate. Okay. So let's come back to what we had up here as our example. We had the calcium chloride. So this right here, calcium chloride. And then how many moles of water do we have? Two. So we're going to come down and we're going to use di. And we're talking about hydrates, so we just put hydrate. So calcium chloride dihydrate. Hydrate. Let's do another example real quick. And let's try doing this one. So that salt isn't quite as straightforward because we have a polyatomic anion there. So we might need to pull out one of our cheat sheets. We see that we have copper. We look at our 
Eni, if we look at our ions, we know that copper can make two charges. And we have to keep this in mind because we might need some Roman numerals in our naming of our salt. So let's go ahead and look at the SO4. SO4 is called sulfate and it has a minus two charge. So let's see what that plays out for us. If this is a minus two, there's no two here. So we know that the copper had to cancel out the charges there. So we know that this has to be copper two sulfate. So when we name our salt, we're gonna call this copper two sulfate. And then the second part is find the prefix. Well, all right, we have a five. This is the easy part. Pentahydrate. Okay. So you will be expected to be able to name them from the formula and also take the name and make a formula. For that. Okay, now you might say, why on earth do I care about these hydrates? Well, you use hydrates in lots of different things. For example, I'll talk for a second so some of you can get caught up on your write on writing those. Epsom salts are a hydrate. So that magnesium sulfate, we can write that example if we want to magnesium sulfate has seven moles of water that it absorbs for every one mole of magnesium sulfate. That's Epsom salts. Some of you might use them in bath salts or you might use them for other reasons. Uh, have you ever heard of sodium carbonate? That's like washing soda. That is a hydrate. And it takes 10, it takes up 10 moles of water for every one mole of sodium carbonate. And so some of you might use that in laundry or other applications. And you might notice we're using that water to get the dirt off in the washing soda for the Epsom salt to absorb into the skin, to use. In order for them to do their job, they have to have the water attached to the molecule. So, just some common examples there. Right. Now, naming is the easy part of what we're gonna have to do with these, with these dudes. Um, let's look at the next step okay the next step is percent water in a hydrate hopefully at this point you realize that anytime you see the word percent you should always do part over whole times 100. I'll make that an X since we don't want to. Part over whole times 100. Every single time you see the word percent, you know this is going to be part of your calculation. In this case, our part is going to be the mass of water. And I should make that the mass of water. And our whole will be the total, the mass of the whole compound, the mass of the whole complex.
So every time we see percent, we're gonna say part over whole times 100. In this case, our part is the mass of water, our whole is the mass of the entire compound. Okay. So let's do, we'll do an example. I see lots of you are still writing, so I'll give you just a second. So, we'll do two examples, but example one is a 1.000 grams sample of copper sulfate. So we're going to use the same thing we had in our example earlier is heated. So if we're heating this, what are we doing? Taking the water off, right? If we go back up to our notes earlier, dehydrating is taking the water off and we do that when we're heating. So reading these problems, we want to make sure we're using what we've learned from their notes. Um, the remaining salt The remaining salt has a mass zero point six three nine zero grams. What percent is the water? All right. So we see percent, we should automatically say, okay, part divided by whole times 100 every time. And so now we have to say, all right, if this is my, this is my whole, after the salt is heated, there's this left. So this is the salt. This is the mass of salt after heating. I need to find the difference here to get the mass of the water. So your first step, your first step is find the difference because that's the mass of the water. Okay, this is So here's my total, here's my salt, I'm going to find the difference in those two numbers. Okay. And that difference, I've already done that for us so we don't have to calculate it. And that is H2O. This is the whole, this is the salt, and this is the water. Okay? Second part of this, what is the percent of water, is right here. Part over whole times 100. So our part is always the mass of water. We're going to take that number. Our whole is what we started with, the whole thing. And we're going to get... So every time you see percent, you're going to say somewhere in there, there has to be a part over whole times 100. My part is always what I'm being asked about.
most of you probably could have done that math before we ever discussed hydrates, but putting it in the context of a chemistry question is where sometimes we get a little freaked out and say, I don't know what I'm doing. But every time you see percent, you're gonna use part over whole times 100. Okay. All right, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense and you've been able to follow along pretty easily. All right, that's good. There is another way that you might be asked percent of water in a hydrate, and that's going to be our example two. In example two, let's go ahead and flip, I'm going to flip the page and we'll get a fresh sheet. Okay, so the other way that you might be asked to do percent composition is from the formula. So your question might look like this. What is the percent of water in, and then they just give you a formula, copper sulfate. So we're going to use the same one. Okay. So when you're given this kind of problem and you're not given any grams, then you have to find those molar masses. So the first step in this one is calculate the formula masses. So you'll want to write that down so you can have that in your notes. And then the second step is the same thing that we've been doing for any time you see percent part over whole times 100. So let's look at what those formula masses would look like. Um, so you start out just like we've done lots of times. You say, okay, what element do I see? Copper, sulfur, oxygen. But then when you get to water, you can do kind of a cheat and just say water because you know all of this is going to stay together. Okay. So then you go to your periodic table and you find Okay, copper is 63.5. I only see one copper, so one times 63.5. I see one sulfur, and I say, all right, periodic table, 32.1. And then oxygen, there's four oxygens, and there's 16.0. We got that one memorized. And then there's five water. So I'll say five times 18.0. Then I want to calculate these out. These are easy because it's just times 1. But then 4 times 16 is 64. And 5 times 18 is 90. So then we add them up and we get 5 and 1 is 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay. So then we look and we say, all right, next step, the part that we're going to use is the water. Okay. And the whole that we're going to use. We're going to be careful with this and make sure that you're using the whole mass of the compound. So then we'll put 90 divided by 249.6 times 100 gives us, we'll go ahead and calculate that. divided by 249.6 equals, okay, times 100, 36.06. I'll write it down here so we fit it on the screen. Okay, so that's a very similar number to what we saw in example one, but you just have to remember if you're not given grams, you have to calculate the formula mass. 